So this is the handy rifle in 223. I'm actually going to try to go over it real quick and maybe uh, just take the stock off, film that, and then do a little before and after video after I clean it and oil it. Because I, um, I had looked inside it with the extractor. I took a, took a piece of uh, 223 brass that I had and put it in there and it didn't want to extract because the inside needs to be oiled but uh, it's a pretty cool rifle it looks very clean inside so once I get some ammunition I'll be able to take it to the range so let me set up the tripod and then I'll start taking this thing apart okay I'm gonna try to do this quick this I had to bust loose with a pair of pliers as it was on so tight I've never taken this gun be apart before. I just had it. I just just bought it. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna find. <laughs> There's a wood block in there where somebody uh, put a swivel on there. That's interesting because I think the um, the swivel holes stripped in the front here, so I think they moved it back. But uh, that's something I can mess with at some other time. I have probably put some. Uh, two-part epoxy in there or something but anyway let's see what this looks like yeah it's not bad you know it needs to be cleaned and it needs to be uh, soaked in oil it's got a little bit of a little bit of pitting you know I, I saw a little tiny bit of rust on the inside um, but it's not bad you know you can see it's got uh, surface rust starting here and there. What it needs is a good cleaning and some love. You know, and it's got this funky Simmons Prairie Master Simmons 4 to 16 by 40 scope, which actually outside looking through the glass it looked really clear. I don't have any idea, you know, how junky it'll be at the range. Uh, you know, <laughs> but it looks good so far. It's got weaver rings on it. And um, next thing we're going to do here is this piece in the back. This unscrews. And then this little door here is hinged on the top right there. I believe you can take that off as a screw, but... Let me just see what I got here, because I have not even played with this gun at all yet. Yeah, okay, so the door opens, and then inside here, it's it's hollow. There's storage in there, and there's nothing in there. There is, however, a big bolt. Um, I will have to see if that's the only bolt that holds this stock on. Let me pause. Okay, so I went and got an extension. And this is a 14 millimeter socket. I'm not sure exactly what size the bolt is that's in here, but there's a bolt that stops right about here, goes up into the back of the receiver here. And so this is hollowed out under here. You take your extension, you line it up, you get it on there, you get your socket and your ratchet, and you boom, and then it comes loose, and it's already loose. I just need to finish uh, taking it off of there. You can see my bench block is a pool noodle at this point. <laughs> I, you know, got to make do with what I have. So I'm going to take this the rest of the way off. And then, oh, there we go. I don't know if it's retained. It looks like it's got some sort of retainer. I'm not going to try and pull it all the way out, but that's what it looks like on this end. And maybe you can see in there. Maybe you can't, but there is down inside there. Let's see. Uh, where are we at here? Uh, I don't think it's going to work very good. Anyway, there's a bolt in there. Trust me. Now, online, I saw where you can buy these stocks. 
um, they were made by Choate machine and you can buy just the forend online or you can buy just the buttstock online I think the buttstock online was like 40 bucks and the forend was like 18 or something like that and um, I wasn't sure if the ones I saw online were actually the real ones that come with the gun but this one says it right inside here choke machine and whatever I can't see it because of the wood block and then gives a, a number and stuff and it says forearm for H&R and NEF shotguns and rifles and then the part number um, so yeah this is a choke forend and a choke buttstock so if you have one of these either a shotgun or handy rifle made by New England firearms or Harrington and Richardson that fits you can buy one of these aftermarket and put it on yourself it's pretty simple this one I believe came as the survivor because the survivors that I've seen online all have this bull barrel uh, if they're in 223 or 308 and so that is what this is something you may find interesting if you've never taken one of these apart before is once you get the stock taken off the only thing you have to do to get the receiver taken off of the barrel is push the release button and then this is held in place by a front pin that front pin right there that you can see on the front of the receiver slides up on this and then this floating pin here sits inside of here inside the receiver slides under there and the two pieces together the big pin in the front which is a hinge pin and then this floating pin here which interacts with the inside here and then when you push the release lever the whole thing just slides right apart okay and that'll let you get in there to get into the bore oil and clean this extractor because uh, this extractor is very sticky and it looks a little rusty so I'm gonna take this and clean it real good and then come back so I sprayed some Hoppy's Elite bore cleaner in the barrel in the bore and I'm letting it sit and it's slowly oozing out down here you can see some blue and black already coming out but it'll get more as time goes on and I'll probably spray a little more in it in 10 or 15 minutes and this receiver I'm gonna put some gloves on and scrub it with some uh, Ed's Red style bore cleaner that I make without acetone in it and then um, let it sit clean it up with a toothbrush and stuff and then I'll do the bore probably we'll, we'll see what it looks like once some more of that uh, Hoppy's Elite goes down inside it and uh, I'll check back okay so the Hoppy's Elite bore cleaner has been sitting for a while and if you look where the barrel is you can see the blue coming out that's from the reaction of the Hoppies elite bore cleaner with the old copper fouling that's inside this barrel and this is exactly why I'm using this stuff to soak and run through and I'm gonna squirt it in there another time or two and just let it sit maybe even for like an hour I'm just gonna let it sit and soak and run out and you'll see all this you know fouling and junk start coming out before I ever put a brush or a pad or anything down in there and then I will uh, run a couple wet patches down probably with the same stuff but I will follow up by patches of either regular Hoppy's bore solvent or the mix of Ed's Red type stuff that I make and then um, depending on what it looks like I'll probably scrub it once or twice with Ed's Red with a bore brush and then get it out. And now over here, this is starting to clean up nicely. I used the Ed's Red. I haven't put any regular oil on it yet, but you can see the rust and dirt on this old shirt, okay, compared to the white shirt. <laughs> this has like a brownish red orange tinge to it because the Ed's Red is wipe, wiping off 
the surface rust. And there's still some little pockets of it on here, you can see. But I'm going to rub it again after I put gloves back on. And then um, when I'm done cleaning and wiping it with the Ed's Red and the scrub brush on the inside, which I already did, then I'm going to use this stuff with a clean rag and I'm going to wipe the outside down and leave it kind of wet on there and then once this stuff soaks in it'll blacken up and be much cleaner looking than it is now but it's cleaning up pretty good and it looks it looks nice I like it the inside's pretty clean it's a little worn but it's not bad so the cleaning has been going well you can see I got dirty patches got a lot of copper out of there um, I just made a pass with one of these and I'm letting it sit. I'm going to let it sit for a while. But you can see just from wiping it, the barrel looks better already. Uh, the receiver, it looks a lot better. I can see that it's going to have some spots even after it's done being oiled a couple times. But it cleaned off really well. The, um, the rag will tell you, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of orange and brown on there. And then this is the one I use the oil with to oil the receiver so it's got a little bit of rust on it but not a lot but you know this is just the first time I've ever cleaned it so after two or three times I'm sure it's gonna clean up even better but for now I'm gonna let this sit for a little while and then scrub the bore so I am still cleaning this thing up um, but I decided because this extractor I don't know how good you can see. Hang on, let me see if I can focus a little better. This extractor is a little sticky. So, this is the type that when this piece of this floating pin here slides, when you open up the action, this pops this out. Now, I've cleaned this up a little bit. And it's not quite as sticky as it was when I first uh, opened it up. You know, when I first got the gun yesterday. So this is a little smoother than it was, but I still want to uh, pop this pin out and pull this ejector or extractor, how, whatever they call it. It's the same kind of thing to me. It's an ejector. Um, I want to pop this out, clean it up, oil it, and put it back in. So since this roll of duct tape is going to be my bench block, I figured I would take the couple of minutes to uh, do this. And, and film it just so you can see what you're dealing with now you want to look at your pin and see which side looks like it's tapered to go out and which side is not and it looks like that's the tapered side to me so I'm gonna try to line this up so I don't wreck my scope get my little pin punch that seems to fit correctly so I don't want to Peen it over or mess it up and actually just so you can see it on film better I guess I will try to do it from this way so there's my pin pins right there I'm going to drive it out and then hopefully pull that piece out and clean it up Okay, so this is what it looks like with the pin halfway out. This little thing can still move. So what I'm I'm gonna do is drive this the rest I can drive this the rest of the way out and then pull the extractor out. Now my pin just popped out. Let's 
held down in there. Hopefully, I'll pull this out. There we go. And you can see when I pop this out, it slid this, it slid this out. So Yep, okay, it's got the little spring under. Alright. So off camera, I will clean this out, clean these two pieces up, and then put a little oil on them and slide them back in. I'm not gonna film the putting it back in, because it'll just be the reverse of what I just filmed. I'll be back. Okay, I am still oiling and cleaning this thing, and I know this video is turning into sort of a long meandering FUD with a camcorder type of thing, but I wanted to, you know, be thorough and show all the different things that I'm doing so that I can help someone else if they take one of these things apart or if they come across an old crusty gun and they want to know how to clean it and oil it and that sort of thing, what things to look for, how to do certain stuff, you know, uh, the whole point in making these videos is to help other people and to share information. So, the old FUD with the camcorder is back with another clip, and I want to show you guys this. Whoever owned this before uh, had drilled holes in it and put, you know, these kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, retainers in here because the old one that was here had been ripped out or broken years back. And so, what I just did last night and then this morning after the stuff hardened, I took some JB Weld, filled in the holes the best I could, and then let it harden. You know, down the road I may or may not sand it, we'll see, but I just wanted to fill the holes in. Because the original stock doesn't have these sling studs on the bottom. It has a sling stud in the front on this little stud knob right here. But this one had been torn out. So I refilled it with some JB Weld and then I bought a new sling stud and threaded that in there. And I'm going to put it back together like that and see what happens. Uh, but just wanted to show you guys a little JB Weld, patch the holes up, put a new sling stud on there, put the swivel together one, uh, later. This is sitting in this kind of oil. I really like this stuff, it does great work for everything. And I just ordered a new bottle, actually, because I've used so much of it in the last two years. So, uh, probably bring you back once this thing is put back together. Again, I know, long meandering FUD with a camcorder. But the point is, share the information. So, I think I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, this will probably end up being one big long video. And then maybe I'll do a follow-up or a part two once I have ammunition and I can shoot it. So this is what it looks like now. And that's not bad. And again, that was only the, the first cleaning that I've ever given it. Uh, I had to really clean the bore. Uh, it, it was pretty nasty actually. One of the dirtiest ones I've ever personally owned. Um, I've cleaned some for other people that were worse, but other than Milserp guns, this is the worst one. This was the worst one. The bore looks pretty good now. And I'm sure after successive oilings and cleanings the barrel and stuff will look better too. The receiver cleaned up pretty nice. And I did get a lot of the uh, surface rust off. It's it's going to be good. I hope I hope it's a good shooter. So I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you all for watching. I hope most of you either learned something or were entertained. I appreciate everybody who watches my videos and the comments and subscriptions and likes and everything. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day. See you next time.